Because <laughs> they all make a lefty in this. Yeah. But you can make your own. One of the few leather crafting tools that it's not, only is right-handed. Yeah, it's not ambidextrous. Yeah. Um, and then we move on. What is this guy, Denny? That is a, a edge beveling knife, they call it. Okay. Uh, I've never had very much luck with it, but I'll show you what I can show you about it. Today. All right. And then we've got these two. I think those are our French bevelers. Yeah. French beveling knives. Or they, French they look like, diving knives. They look like a really good butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're very, very sharp. Though. Yeah. So we've got these two guys. And then we've got this. Uh, what did they call that? Let me see here. I forget. So a super skyver. The super skyver. Yes. Yep. The super skyver. We've got some French edgers. French edgers. In two different widths. And then good old Denny low standby head knife. Yes. Round knife. Yes. Is there a difference between a head knife and a round knife? Is it the same? Head knife's just a bit smaller. Okay. Bit smaller. So it is different. Yeah. And it's got a little, doesn't have quite as steep of an arc to it. Gotcha. Gotcha. But they're basically the same too. All right. And then we brought some veg tan. Yeah. Because that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Our statuettes and the all important strop. Yes. Because you cannot strop. do any good skiving without a polish tool. Yeah, that is right. And one thing I want to mention every tool you ever buy, a cutting tool, needs a little help before sure. you can actually cut leather well with it. So it doesn't matter how good of a tool you buy. You probably ought to work on it a little bit. At least drop it. Okay. You know, to polish that edge. Well, all right, guys. Well, we're going to get showing you how to skive some stuff. Yeah. I've just got a piece of veg tan leather here. Which one do you want me to use first? Why don't we just start with the... We'll start with these three. Okay. Yeah. We'll use the old super skiver. And when you skive, that's just... All that is is a term for thinning the edge down. Okay. So... I'm going to I'm going to use this super skiver and I'm going to this is a tool you kind of need to be careful with because you can get yourself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but and so these three tools compared to the rest of our tools here have replaceable blades. They're the yes. only tools that have replaceable blades. Yes. And this little tool out of the package comes with a handy little oh, little, little package of blade holder. New blade. Yes. Very nice. nice tool. It's got several blades with it. But anyway, that's how you use that tool. And uh, uh, you can also take a like take a big scallop out of the middle of a piece of leather with this. That to help thin that down if you're needing to fold yeah, something. If you need to fold it, yeah. Or just it seems like you can kind of only yeah. go down so far though. Well, Maybe. yeah, and that's that's where you have to be careful because if you aren't holding that at the right angle, uh, it'll cut too deep. Mm. You'll cut out more than you want, but you yeah. see how nice that makes that fold. But anyway, let me skive the other edge with this before we leave. This tool, but it makes a real nice feather edge on it. Okay. Okay, so that is the, scoop, the super skiver. Super skiver. Super skiver. The super skiver. Now... Let's try this uh, safety beveler. Denny's going to try the right-handed version. Yeah, I'm going to use it with my left hand. I'm going to use this right-handed safety skiver, which I can do. Yep. Not very well, but I can do it. <laughs> Denny, you had kind of talked before we came in here about prepping your leather for skiving. What are, what are some things that... Uh, if you've you got suggest? a piece, like say you've got a piece of real firm Harmon Oak, when you want to sky it, you'll always have a little better luck with it if you uh, wet the leather first. Okay. Uh, I've I've wetted I've wetted all this leather just just because I'm going to show you guys how to do it, and I don't want to get into a piece that's giving me trouble sure. while I'm trying to show you how to do it without trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm using this. Uh, ideally, you pull this tool. Yeah. But. Uh, since I'm left-handed, using it with my left hand, I can't pull it. But I'll show you the one that I have uh, modified to use left-handed. See, I'm pulling that towards myself, and you can you can be uh, use a lot of finesse with this tool. I like it. I use it for a lot of things. I use this when I'm building saddles. I use this to shape my ground seat. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, because you have to dig out the whole thing, don't you? Yeah, and you've got to 
do it on a curve and this is just perfect for that because the blade is actually on a curve but I can sky I can thin this whole piece of leather down make it from a, an eight ounce leather to a four ounce leather if I wanted to taking a layer off at a time yeah well, it seems with the other one you were talking about how it's really easy to dig too deep. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot more control with the... You have more control with the... Or I have more control okay. with the safety beveler than I do with that. It's safer. Driver. Yeah, it is very safe. <laughs> so you're only taking off a little bit and you can just go yeah. one pass at a time. Yep. Okay. We've done that. Now which tool should I use? Well, let's just... Okay. This is a, a skiving knife. Let's see what I can do with it. And you can skive with it. And it, you know, how, how, uh, how it cuts depends a lot on the piece of leather that you've got. A real firm piece of leather is going to be harder to skive than and a real soft piece of leather with loose fibers on it. Mm -hmm. Down at this end, it's real firm. Down at this end, it, it gets loose. That seems dangerous. Well, don't stand in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> you can do it. This isn't an ideal tool for me to use. I don't. I don't care for it. I, I have never used it. That is not Denny's favorite tool. Not my favorite tool. Okay. Now let's try one of these uh, French skiving knives. And they are kind of cool. I don't use them very much, but they are cool. I don't know why I don't use them. Well, because you just use your head knife. Yeah, I just use my head knife. But these th if you get these things sharp, they will really cut knives. Oh, yeah. And I went through and I, I sharpened and, and buffed all these tools before we came in here today, so. But I feel like maybe we should go over buffing a little bit or, or doing some stropping. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is if a really you, fine edge. Like, like, yeah, I'm cutting this, but if I started having trouble with it, I would take, take my strop and strop it. Now, this is a curved blade, so you... So if I just drop this way, I would only be getting one part of the blade. So I'm going to go like this and get half the blade. Then I'll go like this and get the other half of the blade. Just like you're putting butter on a piece yeah. of toast. And when you're talking about this, a lot of people think, well, you know, I can do that, but it's not going to help me. But if you ever strop a blade and after you've been cutting with it uh, unstropped, you will be definitely surprised what it does for you. Are you using that upside down? Nope. Nope. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Nope. I use, uh, okay. At least I use it with, with the, the beveled part of the blade down towards the leather. All right. You can cut the end of it. And that's another thing. The surface that you're skiving on, mm -hmm. old timers always used a piece of glass. Okay. But to, I don't have a piece of glass here, but a piece of nice polished granite works works pretty darn well. You don't want to, uh, if I was skiving off onto the table, I would catch the table when I come off. Yeah. Now this isn't a tool that you want to cut on, no. on your granite, but to skive with, a piece of granite works well. Let's see here, Dean asks, do you want to get the, the leather as wet as you would for tooling? Uh, that depends, Dean. Uh, another thing I didn't mention when when I was talking about getting the leather wet, it will also uh, give it a certain amount of stretch. Oh yeah. So so you have to take that into consideration. You know, uh, generally when you're skiving an edge, it's not going to show anyway. So I will skive a piece and then I'll cut it to size. Okay. But to, because it is going to stretch some. And a lot of times it'll, it'll, the edge of your leather will start to wave a little bit when you come off of it with a, with a skiving knife and you can trim those up to a certain extent too. Yeah. Could you just spritz it from the back though? Maybe, I know yesterday you dunked some pieces, but. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. Uh, 
a real firm piece of leather, you need to get it pretty wet to make it very much easier to yeah. skive. You know, uh, there's no way around it. Are you going to do the same thing when you get it wet and kind of let that really penetrate and soak in before you start your skiving process just like you would when you're tooling? Yeah, this leather, uh, it takes water pretty well, pretty easily. Uh, so I didn't have to put as much water on it. Mm -hmm. A firm piece of leather, you're going to have to put more water on it. So you'll want it to temper a little bit to where the, the moisture actually penetrates to towards the center of the leather For instead sure. of just on the surface. All right, let's see here. Okay. Mike asked, can the first three knives be struck? So I'm assuming he's oh, talking yes. about- yes. Yeah, this knife, uh, can we go to the overhead? Yeah. This knife, it just has a little a little razor blade in here. Uh, before I ever put it in, I would put, use a pair of pliers, a pair of vice grips or something, mm -hmm. and go to a, a buffing wheel okay. and polish it. I didn't do that with this blade, but you can, you can strop it on a strop. Just, you know, pull away from the edge when you're stropping it. The blade. Now these two knives, they take the same blade, don't they? Or do they take different blades? These two? Yes, uh -huh. they take the same blade. Okay. Yes, those in injector razor blades is what yeah. they are. Yeah, you can polish that just like you can polish, like we use Olfa knives here in the shop. Um, just for cutting leather as, as we work with it and you mm -hmm. can take those replaceable blades and you can strop that blade yeah. before you you know either break off the end or put a new blade in you can polish that up yeah you can ask people back in the area where i work i spend a lot of time at a buffing wheel <laughs> almost every time that i uh, start a project and, and start to cut something i'll go to the buffing wheel and strop my knives yeah good. Uh, it it makes you have a cleaner job. It makes it easier to do. Uh, you know, you won't hate yourself in the morning quite as bad. Sure, for sure. <laughs> that last tool you were using, Denny. Mm hmm. Eric had a comment. Oh, there. he said he's never tried to. Uh, with try the bevel to... facing <laughs> down. Uh, try it. I I never tried it with the bevel facing up. Let's see what happens. That works too. I guess whichever one you prefer. <laughs> I might prefer with the bevel up now. <laughs> it cuts pretty well. The, the key is having it sharp. And you're not, you're sliding along and cutting them, not bulldozing. Yeah, yeah, I was going to mention that. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Uh, most people try to, to just bulldoze through a piece of leather, but when you're skiving, you're actually slicing the edge of that leather off. So if you'll notice, I'm not I'm not just pushing right here. I'm at an angle, and I'm slicing that leather as I go. I mostly remember that because you, every time I've tried to sky something or with your help, you're like, quit bulldozing it and just yep. slice it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, what have I got now? We've well, got the little baby one. I don't know if he's a little different. baby one. It works the same as, as the big one. Let's see. I'll do it facing that. Ooh, this is sharp. <laughs> yeah, it is. Now let me go with it facing down. Actually, I think it does better with the bevel facing up. What's your name again? Eric. Eric, thank you. <laughs> You can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Sorry, Denny. The, the trick is if I'm going to remember it next time I fix this knife up. But anyway, okay, let's go to another tool. Let me okay. whittle with whit this a little bit. So we've come up to our French bevel. Yeah. Well, they're, they're called bevelers, but. Yeah, French edge beveler. I've got two different sizes here. One's about a quarter inch and one's about a half inch. Uh, they both do exactly the same thing. The half inch will just take a, a bigger piece than the... Than how, the how do you strop those tools? Uh, I would strop this just the same. Okay. Just just pull away from the edge. If, if you try and strop that way, you're going to be yeah. beveling your strop. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, 
you can uh, when we did the fly rod case yes. last week I used this to cut a 45 degree bevel on the edge of uh, our where we uh, did our French box stitch but I you <clears throat> and it, if if this was real thick like if I had three thicknesses of leather this quarter inch wouldn't work but the half inch probably would right but the half inch you can just take a, a bigger wider uh, bevel on on your piece of leather <laughs> well and then also with these just like you can with the with the safety skyver um you can take a chunk out of the middle to help do those yes. turns yes if, if your knife is is pretty sharp which these are you can actually gouge out of the middle. Denny, have you ever used the V gouge tool? Yes. Do you? I, uh, it, it, it gouges more of a a V yes. into your leather, so yes, yes it's, it's much... shaped like a V. It, mm -hmm. will, it will actually cut a V out of your leather. Uh, every tool has it has its purpose, you know. Yeah. Uh, I can't say I've never used one, but I can say as a general rule, I don't use one. I'll use the French edger instead. Let me use this small one here. Look at that. I use that for like a field note journal where I needed it to be thinner where it could fold in the middle. Yeah, that makes it fold nicely. You can take a... You can take a piece of 10 ounce leather and uh, sky the uh, channel in it to down to about five ounce, five ounce, and it will fold right there mm -hmm. easily. All right. Well, the, the only tool left on this side is our handy dandy. Well, I got some other questions. Oh, yeah, they're, com they're coming in hot and heavy at the moment. Okay. What about skiving a belt fold in? The turn back? Yeah. That's what I, okay. Let me find. Here's a. Oh, here's a piece of leather, approximately like a, a belt in. I would use this uh, safety skyver. Well, and I'll come back here. Just say you're, I don't have a pin here. Uh, here you go. Nice catch. <laughs> okay, so say this is your belt slot, your, uh, your buckle slot right here. I don't know if you can all see that. I think you can. But I'm going to start right here. So you're going to start just in front of it. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you want that slot to be thin. Because uh, that's where it's turning. Yeah, that's where it's going to turn. Then I'm going to sky this down to about half thickness. And, and, you know, what we were talking about before, this is a, you can use a, Quite a bit of finesse with this tool. Um, Anthony asked if these are all CS Osborne. A lot of them are. The head knife is Osborne. The French edgers are not. Uh, no, those are old. Uh, I don't know if they called them craft tool, but, okay. um, but they were from Tandy years yep, ago. These two. Those are Osborne. Those are Osborne. This guy's an Osborne. I, I think that's an Osborne too. Was it say it's on the package? Hard, but... Nope, it's not. It's not an Osborne. Yeah. But anyway, there's my turn back is skived. Makes it fold nicely. You know? And that was a piece of dry leather. Yeah. I was gonna so when when we're producing our belts in the shop, we have we use one of the um weaver pull through. Oh no, is it an Osborne? Yeah, it's an Osborne. It's been Osborne. Um, yeah. One of the pull-through skyvers, just the, the bench mount the bench skyver. Yeah. It's, it's an expensive little machine. I think it's like 500 bucks. But if you are manufacturing belts, skiving each individual turn back by hand takes a long time. If you're doing any kind of any kind of uh, leather work, uh, you know, uh, on a regular basis, uh, a bench splitter is almost a necessity. Yeah. It's, it's I, very nice. You there's a there's a long flat blade. Um, you put your belt strip in there. You pull it towards you, and it splits off the end. Yeah, it, so. it'll it'll split it just like a, a Kamoga mm -hmm. 
uh, an electric splitter. With the toe split that gets it back out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the thing. You can just skive a certain amount with a, with yeah. a bench splitter. We uh, we used to make a knife sheath for a company, and um, it was a buoy style knife sheath, and the belt loop came um, around the back and back over. And so we would take it, we would click it all out. It all clicked out as one part, the, the, the sheath folded, and then the belt loop came and uh, was skived inside. And so that we would take it and we would skive that in down. That belt loop got skived all the way to almost paper thin at the end so that we could fold it in. Yeah. And uh, we use that bench splitter all the time. Let's see here. Brenda asked if all of these are available in the store. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, we don't carry these two French edgers anymore, but we do carry, uh, I think we've got a Craftmaster. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we, of course, we have the Osborne. Yeah. Uh, French edgers. Yeah. So you can, you can get that tool, but just not the brand that he's yeah, got here. Yeah, not this brand. Um, this but is otherwise, one I have on my bench, yeah. We do carry all of these. Not not the left-handed safety beveler, because <laughs> that one you have to buy the right-handed and then make it yourself. Yeah, it's a hacksaw <laughs> and J.B. Well. That's all it takes. <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh, show them your magic with this, uh, this head knife. I don't know how magic this will be. Everybody thinks that it's magic, Denny. This is just... There again, depends on how sharp it is. But I have more control with this than any other tool that I've showed you today. But this is an example. I just wet this leather, but the center is still dry. Mm -hmm. And you can see that, and you can also feel it when you're skiving. But uh, I can do pretty well with this all the way, all the way across. And once again, having the surface makes a really big difference. Yeah, uh, you're it, not you're if you're if you're trying to sky on on the plastic cutting board like the poly cutting board that's not going to do well. Yeah, I, I feel like it slides all over the place. For some reason, this is slick, but it doesn't slide around yeah, on you. Well, you've got to hold on onto your piece. But, yeah, uh, but yeah, you you need it. Well, and it's because and your blade is going to be yeah your blade is yeah. going to be against that surface, mm -hmm. but not digging into it. Exactly, it and it'll slide along. It'll dig into the poundo. It'll dig into the poly board. Right. Um, and plus, so when I have the poly board and I'm trying to pull and push, my poly board is just pulling and pushing all around. You know, like it's it doesn't want to stay in in place because it's not heavy. Yeah. This stays in yeah. place, and then you're holding onto the leather. You're not trying to hold onto the yeah. board that's trying to move around as you push things right. on it. Right. So. And a piece of glass is is the best because it's even less porous than this granite. Mm. I mean, this granite is polished nicely, but yeah. it still has a little bit of a uh, an aggregate to it. To, you, you can't see it, <laughs> but uh, the glass won't dull your knife nearly as quick. Gotcha. As but anyway, that's all there is to sky. <laughs> all you've got to do is try it. Just remember to slice, don't bulldoze. That's right, at an angle. Yeah. But uh, there, you know, use whatever tools you've got. You don't, uh, if you've got one of these uh, French skiving knives, use it, you know. If all you've got is one of these, use it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can skive with any of these tools. <clears throat> Which one do you think is the easiest for someone with weaker hands? Probably this, the safety beveler. Because you're pulling. Yeah. With everything yeah, else, you're you pushing. Pull. Yes. Mm. And you can change the blade out, stroke yeah. it up, and stuff yeah. mm -hmm. to make it sharp. Yeah, you need, especially these razor blades, I mean, they come sharp, but they aren't sharp. They need to be polished. Even, yeah. the, even the razor blades, right out of the package, need to be stropped before they cut the way they should. Oh, we didn't even, so this strop just has some Jewelers Rouge on it. We sell Jewelers Rouge. You can probably buy it at the hardware store. I would imagine, or like the craft store, you could probably get just a block of Jewelers Rouge. Jewelers yeah. Rouge. Um, you know, yeah. if you don't have a, if you don't need to place an order with us, it's like three bucks. Go, yeah. go, go find yourself stuff. And then we just, Denny will either put it on the back side of the leather mm -hmm. or the top side. So what is better and what's the difference? Uh, it doesn't matter. The top side is just smoother. Mm -hmm. The, the, the rough side will 
hold more of the jeweler's rouge, you know. Yeah. Uh, I use the top side with my swivel knife a lot because it's it's firm and it won't round mm. the corners off of the swivel knife nearly as bad. Sure, sure. But either side will work well. And then he you literally know. just cemented two pieces of leather to a piece of Kydex. Yeah. With a hole in it so he can hang it on, on his bench. Yeah. <laughs> so. And a lot of times, you know, at home, before I had a buffing wheel, I would put the jeweler's rouge on one side and emery, I use an emery cake on the back side. Emery. Like that green is, stuff? No, it's black. Okay. Black or gray. Okay. You know, and you can, any of those big box hardware stores, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they, they'll they sell little kits, you know, with a, a green, a white, uh, a, red. a red, you know, and those yeah. the red is the jeweler's rouge. Red works well. Red, it just shows a little more color if you get it on your project. Right. You'll have to clean that off. I was going to say, one thing that Denny wasn't doing, just because we're not super worried about our little scrap pieces here, is when he's done polishing, you should take like a cloth or something and wipe yeah. off that, that yeah. rougey metal. Yeah. That's why I wear jeans. Oh, he just wipes them on his jeans. <laughs> but to, to strop this, I would just pull it. You and know, you're just rocking it, it as you pull yeah, it so you get that one, blade. Yeah, I'm just starting on one end and rocking all the way to the other end. But that's all there is to it. And every time you do that, it'll make it cut a little better again. Mm -hmm. So, like, Little Fear just wants to clarify that you are stropping in the opposite direction than cutting. Yes, you always pull away from the edge. <clears throat> a lot of people, when they sharpen a, a knife, even on a stone, will go like in a circular motion. But every time you go forward, to me, you're dulling the edge. You're cutting. When you're pulling away from the edge, that's when you're, you're actually making it sharper because you're pulling that material off rather than digging into the stone or the, yeah. or the strop, whatever you're doing. I bet everybody wants to see you polish that head knife. Because that's a question that we get asked a lot. And it's right. somewhere in that video that's like two hours long where we sharpen all the tools. But this will just make it a little bit easier to find. All right. And there again, this is a curved, a curved blade. So I can't, I can't strop the whole thing at once. So I'll start on one edge here. I'm just sharpening from about here to here. Or stropping. And then I'll turn it over and strop the same area going the other direction. I'll turn it over and strop. So you're just getting the front and the back. Yes, the front and the back, same the same part of the blade. Then I'll turn it over and I'm, I'll do the same thing here. Just polishing that up. And then to get the center of the blade from here to here, I'll, I'll put two fingers on this and just rock it side to side. Then I'll turn it over, rock it side to side. And I don't know if you've ever seen a barber strop a straight razor, mm -hmm. but you know, after you've done it a few thousand times, <laughs> it, it's pretty quick, you know. <laughs> or a butcher. Oh, yeah. Sharpening <laughs> steel. Yeah, those fellows are yeah. impressive. Yeah, but that's because they've, they've <laughs> done that a thousand times, you know. It, pretty soon, it, I say probably it's a natural motion. Several times a day, they re-up their blade yeah. after cutting all day. But that's how you strop. And you do that every time and, you pick up your knife. Yeah, every time. And, and like this straight knife right here. Just back and forth. The the key another key too is when you're when you're stropping this way, you don't turn you don't wipe the, the end of it up like that because then you're rounding off that edge. So just keep that same angle and just stop rather than, than wiping the edge of the blade up. Okay, Denny, so Victor asks, will my SLC edges come sharp? The edge bevelers, I assume he's talking about the SLC Pro. Edge beveler Pro. These guys? Uh, yes, they, they're pretty sharp, yes. They, they come sharp. Those that, those that are back there have not been sharpened or polished. Yeah, I mean, you can always, <clears throat> I'll take some some uh, like just cotton or uh, or uh, linen cord mm -hmm. and and uh, rub some jeweler's rouge on that on that and you can actually just run that cord. Actually, the cord would just be like on the top of that blade. You can just and strop it like that. Yeah. Or if you've got a buffing wheel, just hold it up to the the edge of that to the corner of your wheel, and it'll strop these. 
Yeah. So that is one thing that we talk about. We do have a whole. It's a it's a long video, but Denny literally goes over sharpening every tool that you could possibly need to sharpen, um, and a lot of little tricks and tips like using a cotton cord on these really tiny small sections yeah. Yeah. with some jeweler's rouge on it. So. Yeah. But the. If you want to spend some time learning to do something, learn to sharpen your tools. Yeah. That that will help you as much as anything you can learn. I mean, you can, all the techniques, like like everything I've done today is fine, but if you're using a dull tool, it's not going to work right. Right. You're never going to get that edge yeah. beveled cleanly. Yeah. Um, Marcus said, are the safety bevelers any good? He always thought that they were just toys. No, they're very good. I've used them for years. Are you this this particular tool here, uh, JB Weld and all. I don't know when they invented JB Weld. <laughs> That's probably about the time I did this. I've had this for years, and you can see, you know, made in Taiwan. It says, but to, I, I've had it probably thirty years. Yeah, and you use yep. it all the time. Yeah, I use it a lot. I was gonna say if you're not if you're not using your head knife, yep. you're probably gonna be using that. That's right. Yeah. He would no. like you to use it again. Yeah, they aren't toys. They're one of the most inexpensive tools that we sell. Yeah, I think but, like 10, but 10 12 bucks. Yeah, I don't even think they're that much, but they're well worth the money. Yeah. If, if you're wanting a skiving tool and don't know what to buy, Can you try. use it again? Huh? Can you use it again? You got enough leather to use it again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. So Marcus said, why do you guys keep looking up? Because Marcus Tony didn't say it. Oh. I typed it in there. Okay. So Tony moved our, our questions monitor to where it's mounted to the ceiling now and up here. So instead of being next to the monitor where we can see ourselves, um, it, 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 we're so playing with it. At some point, it's all good. it'll be lower. Yeah. Using a wall mount to hang it from the ceiling is not it like it's so. staring at the sky. <laughs> it's good for our posture, right? Yeah. <laughs> keep looking up. Stand tall. <laughs> okay, here we go. And I just dropped this, so it's cutting well. That's a pretty firm piece of leather you got there. Yeah, this is pretty firm. But you'll notice when you're using this, every time you come off onto onto this granite, which is what you need to be coming off onto, it's going to dull that blade a little bit. So mm -hmm. you'll have to strop it on occasion. And if it gets where you can't... Drop it and do any good. Put a new blade in. Drop that. I really, I really think that people want to use the blades too long. Yeah. Um. And don't don't be cheap with your blades. Yeah. Because that just makes your leather work more difficult all the time. Yeah. But you can strop these a lot. Yeah. You know, I would strop this till till it's not doing any good. I wouldn't take it back out of the out of the tool and strop it that way again. Okay. When it comes to that point, I would throw it away and put in a new Gotcha. Blade. Now, do you strop it before you put it in there? So yes, you take it out of the pack, you strop it, and you put yeah. it in? Like I said, I, I'll use a pair of pliers or vice grips mm -hmm. or something and, and put it on a buffing wheel. and Polish it right up. Yeah. Any uh, more questions, Tony? Denny, can you come here and teach me to strop and sharpen as the customer service? Where do you live? If it's Hawaii, if you'll pay my way, I'm there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he will be on a flight tonight. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing You're anymore. Not though. Tooling class is canceled <laughs> for tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Or if you live anywhere that's that's pretty cool, maybe with a good yeah. fishing spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. <laughs> So these both use, what blade is it? Hey, Tony, can you look that up? What blade did the safety and the super skyver? Where's the catalog? Somebody stole my catalog. If you oh, look, it's right there. oh, it's right there. If you look at the description for either the safety beveler or the, the super skyver, um, it should list the item number with the, just give it here. Just quit wasting our time. Just don't don't even. Get back to running the cameras. <laughs> Minnesota, he said. 
There's a lot of lakes. You live in, in Minnesota? Yeah, I can go fishing up there. <laughs> Just don't go in the wintertime. I guess you could do ice fishing. You ever been ice fishing? Yes, I have in Colorado. I've never been to I've never been to Minnesota and spent any time at all. They got big mosquitoes up there. I'm I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so let's see here. So it uses our uh, replacement blade for this is the 399-300-200. 399-300-200 is the item number for the blades for both the Super Skyver yeah. and the Edge Beveler, the Safety Beveler. And they're just a little, little blade like that. Yeah, how about to the overhead? sky, Tony? Tommy? Yeah. Oh, this one's really That's bright. That's what they look like. Do you know how to turn the brightness down? I don't. Well, yeah, we're supposed to know that. That's not our job. Yeah, that's... There we go, look at that. Okay, now you can show it off again. <laughs> There's three of them. There we go. And that said, okay, cool. give me the dates that you want to come. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why don't you come on down here? I'll show you how to sharpen your blades and we'll go fishing. Just practice. Here. Just practice a lot. Yeah. Make yourself up a strop. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just glue some leather to something that you can hang on to. Yeah. And I like, sometimes I see these little tiny straps, but I like that you've got like a little over a foot here, maybe like 14 mm -hmm. inches or so. So it gives you just a nice amount of room to yeah. be able to, especially because the head knife. I mean, you're you're trying to drop a couple inches yeah. at a time. Yeah. So you've got about 14 inches long is your leather, a little over two inches wide, maybe like two and a half inches wide. Yeah. So. Are these the same blades in the lacing tool? Uh, the lacing tool? Yes, I believe so. Yes, they a are. A lace yes. maker. Yes, yeah. they are. I say I think the only thing that uses a different blade is the strap cutter uses that little short blade. The strap cutter does, but I I use these blades in my strap cutter anyway because they're thinner. You can get them how, sharper. How but, thick should your strap be? Doesn't matter. You could strap on a piece of leather like this without gluing it to anything. Just yeah. put your stuff on it and strap. I say what are these? These are like four to five ounce probably. Yeah. So not super not super heavy. Yeah. You should only make your strap out of. Veg? Uh, vegetable tan leather, yeah, that works the best. Anything, anything though that'll collect that uh, jeweler's rouge, you're just you just scrub it on there. Mm -hmm. It just turns into powder. It's like a piece of chalk. Right. Kinda. It even looks like chalk. The white jeweler's rouge does. It's a little stickier than chalk. Yeah. Um. So we've made some some straps before in the shop, and we've used a latigo, that like a barber work. strop. That'll work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use the rough side because it'll, like I said, it'll collect What's that more? to Jeweler's Rouge. I was also thinking sometimes you'll see those barber straps specifically and they've got like that canvas strop piece. Is that more for doing scissors and the, stuff? One side is just canvas, dry canvas. Nothing okay. on it. And the other side has the Jeweler's Rouge on it. Gotcha. So, Why would you use a canvas? Uh, final polish. Okay. When they're about to cut your throat, you want it to be sharp. <laughs> <laughs> you don't a, want it to hurt. <laughs> more of an artsy polish. What's that? Using a canvas. Is it more artsy? You can get more finesse, a little uh, flair. Sure. A little artsy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just come over here and slap me whenever. <laughs> Brenda said that you should have your own tool line. I mean he has he has a lot of tools on his bench that he's handcrafted. Yeah. <laughs> altered. Let's let's say I've altered a lot of tools. There was a screwdriver in Denny's toolbox, I feel like. It, it may have gotten made into a multitude of things, That's depending right. on what he needed yeah. that day. Yeah. Poor folks have poor ways, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you've got a grinder, you can make your own. That's right. That's right. Grinder, vice, pair of pliers, and a hammer. <laughs> Good to go. Yeah. You can oh, make man. anything out of absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, All right. Anything else? Joshua uses a piece of a car piece of cardboard box for stropping. Do you ever have to replace your strop when it's too gray? No, no. If you just if keep you, adding more rouge, yeah, just keep adding rouge to it. To, it'll just get smoother and actually do a nicer job. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I've had that strop. I've been here going on eight years. I think that's my original strop. <laughs> Yeah, just keep using it. Yeah. 
I think you've kind of worn down the surface eventually. Probably. But I use it. I had a couple catalog questions. Mm. That's nice. <laughs> so normally it comes out in January, but that's when all of our vendors come out with their price changes as well. <laughs> that makes it really hard to put out a catalog that can be accurate for a year. We're just going to stop talking now. <laughs> that's where that's going to land. I can't even talk about it in the meeting. So. <laughs> been banned from conversations hey denny yes why is it that you use a knife to cut leather and it dulls the knife but we use leather to sharpen the knife you're not really using the leather to sharpen it you're leather the, the knife doesn't actually dull but when you have a knife that's really really sharp the edge on it is so thin so thin that when you cut, you actually curl that edge over. So you aren't dulling the knife, but when you strop it, it straightens that edge back out. Gotcha. Or maybe, well, it's it's removing a little bit. Of yeah, it, edge yeah, it will take. That's what the why that's why it turns gray is because you've got a little bit of metal there as it. That's right. Yeah, as it cleans right. it up, it'll take off. If the edge is maybe too delicate, once it's rolled, it'll remove it, and then you'll polish that edge back yeah. up. Yeah. 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 But that's why you, there you know, that's why there's different grits of, of the the compound that you can put on there. You know, the red and the white are are extra fine. I think green I'm not sure which one is the finest. I'm thinking the green is probably the finest hmm. that you know. can buy. And then comes the red and then comes the white. But we always use white here and, and that makes it Plenty sharp enough, as you can see, it makes these tools. Well, and I feel like we try to be very specific about there's a difference between sharpening a tool and polishing right. a tool. So when you're stropping like this, you are polishing that edge. You're not necessarily, like you are removing a slight amount of material, yeah. but you're not removing the edge like if you were to take it to the grinder and sharpen the tool. Yeah. If you have a, a knife that's actually dull, if you can if you can hold it up to the light and see the edge on it, you aren't going to get it sharp on a straw. Right. Yeah, you have to then take that and you have to grind a new edge onto yeah. it or put an edge, yeah. and then you can strop that edge to make it. And so that's why, like, when you get a tool, it, it's probably sharp. Like, the tool isn't necessarily a dull tool, but it hasn't been polished to that final, like, super user-friendly that's state right. yet that's right so just like i know a lot of people talk about the osborne oblong punches that we sell those actually are not a, a, a sharp edge tool because you're driving it into into the material um so you don't want a super fine feather edge because you're yeah, just going to yeah. break it right off yeah you'll you'll curl the edges on that yeah quick yeah so it actually comes in and when you look at it it is flat and you can kind of strop that to a degree i think a little bit you can you can, but most people, when they have trouble with it, with an end punch or something like that, it's because they they aren't doing it on a solid mm -hmm. surface like a piece of granite. They're like, I got my block you know, of wood out and it's not cutting through. Yeah, and you're, or I'm on the kitchen never table. Gonna, yeah. All it seems to do is just kind of mash on it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But get yourself a piece of granite or an anvil and put a piece of poly board like that on it. Yeah, you want the poly board. You know? When you're using a poundo, it's it's not hard. Plus, it it'll it it'll just dull it. I think quicker. Yeah. So the cutting board is ideal. Yeah. Plus, you can you can drive a, a, a tool all the way through a piece of poundo board yeah. and into your granite, too. which would not be happy. Yeah. Yeah. But but, but poly board it, it's it's firm. It's hard. You know. You'll know when you hit it. Yeah. You'll know when to stop. And that's uh, that's another thing, like we were talking about to when you're using these cutting tools about you want to slice and not bulldoze. Mm -hmm. An end punch, you are bulldozing a hole through. You're actually just punching a hole or punching the end off of it, yeah. you know, because you're cutting straight down. And that's a lot of surface area. When you yeah. think either the end punch or those oblong punches, you are you are you have a lot of blade that you yeah. are trying to drive into your leather. And depending on the thickness, the firmness of your leather, and once again the surface, the mallet that you're using. I mean, Denny would never use you know a thirty six ounce mallet to tool with because it's too heavy. But you you're gonna need one if you're driving a two inch oblong yeah. punch through a through a That's belt right. slot. That's right. You know? Yeah, and a lot of people trying. 
whack, 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 whack. You, that makes it really rough. You need something you can do business with. <laughs> I, so, so I used to teach them classes out on our retail floor, and um, I would always come back in our into our belt room where we did punch the slots and the in punches, and we had I think it was a forty eight ounce dead blow mallet. And so we were, um, I did a metal smithing class where we punched out metal circles and then like hooked them together and made bracelets, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'd go get that dead blow mallet and I'd come back and, and I had a ring on at the time and I had the head of the mallet and I'm hammering away to punch out these circles and I smashed my ring onto my finger. <laughs> And I had to have like Chris go peen it off for me and like open it back up so I could get I could get my finger out of the ring <laughs> that I had smashed onto my hand. But surface really matters, mallet really matters. Like you're this, this little guy, I don't even know what weight this is, but it's not very heavy. This is probably like a yeah. 12, 16 ounce mallet or something yeah. like that. This is never gonna drive that punch through, or it's just gonna take you forever and you're gonna get mad at it. Yeah. Um you know, yeah. try to go through those kind of punches you don't want to baby them you you want them to know you're yeah trying to yeah. drive a hole through yeah something. you want a good weighted yeah. rawhide mallet or a nice weighted poly mallet of some sort yeah. or or something yeah. so that you can really yeah drive those through and then your surface is really going to make or break whether or not that punch is going to work yeah. for you yeah. so that's right all right well i think we've Ooh, Arbor Press. Mike Swain wants to know if an oblong punch in an Arbor Press. Oh, he says, he it, says works. it works for him. I would imagine it does. <laughs> I would imagine it does. It works well. Yeah. But there again, you know, the, what you're punching into makes a lot of difference. You don't want to punch into a piece of metal. You know? Right, because then that punch will yeah. not be a punch anymore. Yeah. You know, Ethan's asking about that teal gator behind you, Denny. Terry, have you been thinking about it? Who uh, who is it? Terry Beeson. Terry Beeson, my fly rod guy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Terry, that's you know where to find gator. it. It's it will put it back on retail. So if you want to come in, you can take a look at it. We had these yesterday because we did exotics in our live shopping, and so we brought these two back here just because yeah. people needed to see them. But they were really expensive. That one's pretty so. too, but this one, this one's really rich looking. Yeah, yeah. I want a pair of shoes out of that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Anything else, Tony? I'm looking through all that. I don't see anything looking. else. All right, guys. Well, I hope you learned something today. Denny and I are working on a super fun couple videos for next week um, with those chef's knives that we have on loan from the lovely Royer family. They um, are something. They are something. So <laughs> if you wanted to look them up this weekend, it's uh, Kyle Royer and his dad, Jeff Royer. Um, we've got some of their chef's knives here, and we will be making a Saya with a Stingray inlay as well as a chef knife roll. Now, what is a Saya? So a Saya is a sheath for a chef's knife. <laughs> A chef's knife sheet. That's kind of a mouthful. Yeah. A chef knife sheet. A chef knife sheet. That's right. hard to say. But yeah, so we'll be we will be working on that next week. Um, so we'll see you guys on Wednesday, and I hope you have a great weekend. Yep. See you guys. Bye. See ya.